Decades ago, I started growing food in my front and backyard, and I realized that my mission in life is to inspire and empower others to grow their own nutrient-dense, healthy, organic food. Because of this, a lot of people have come to me with their gardening questions over the years, and that got me thinking, what if we put together a community that would help budding gardeners blossom? So I finally made the idea a reality with my Urban Farm U member program. Each month, your membership includes three live online events, a monthly class, a chit chat with an expert, and a monthly coaching session, plus access to the experts on our member page and a significant discount on our signature courses. I'm deeply committed to transforming our global food system, and I do this by empowering you to grow your own food. The Urban Farm Membership Program is a simple way to get going. Please join me in transforming your food system today. To learn more, go to urbanfarmmembership.org or text MEMBERSHIP to 33444. That's urbanfarmmembership.org or text MEMBERSHIP to 33444. You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the Grow Your Own Food revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Lynn Hartwell of Seeds Community Cafe to talk about his experience with health, equity, community, and food. A childhood spent on a farm in Northeast Iowa shaped Lynn's views on community and how neighbors can help and support one another through sharing food and resources. He believes that this is a forgotten way of living in America. 30 plus years spent as a chef in world-class restaurants taught Lynn the importance of creating beautiful food for people to enjoy and gather around to share. In recent years, he spent time helping others open community kitchens and supporting local sustainability. This led him to open Seeds Community Cafe in September 2013. As a nonprofit that is based on a pay it forward model, Seeds patrons can partake of healthy, nutritious, locally sourced, and creatively crafted meals regardless of their ability to pay. Lynn is a huge supporter of community cafes, kitchens, and local gardens as a social enterprise and way of life. He believes that this concept of sharing local great food around a community table can change the world we live in by impacting food security and building community in our own neighborhoods. Plus, it also enhances our local economies. Welcome to the show today, Lynn. Greg, thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Uh, Absolutely. Appreciate that. Yeah. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share more about the path you took to get where you're at now? Oh, my goodness. You know, when I think back and look back at what I do now, and uh, it's got to go back to starting at my childhood that you probably talked a little bit about with uh, being on a farm. I was uh, raised on a farm in uh, northeast Ohio, uh-huh. and uh, you know I lived in a small farming community, and it was a incredible experience. It was something that was um, uh, it was much bigger than me, much bigger than all of us uh, in this community. Uh, probably the whole town was 500 people, maybe. Oh wow! And, uh, so we had uh, you know small rural urban farms. No, not urban farms, but rural farms. I'm uh-huh. sorry. <laughs> it's all and, good. Uh, we shared food, you know. My dad had orchards, and I remember mm-hmm. vividly uh, taking, uh, gosh, bushels of uh, oh. apples and pecks of pears and mm. you know peaches and things and, and to other farms and other farmers and trading them, trading them for like eggs and chickens oh, and other veggies. Nice. And we, we shared meals all the time. We had incredibly, wonderfully prepared tables and meals, and uh, you know all that stuff we call organic today. We just <laughs> called food when I grew up. It was yeah, just, exactly. You know, and, you know, the neat part about the experience was uh, around food, which is, uh, you know, food is such a great place to start communication, start relationships oh, yes. yep. and uh, and community. You know, in our community, we knew each other so well. We knew each other's successes. We celebrated those. Yeah. We knew each other's hardships and we uh, embraced each other. We often at times would kick each other in the behind every once in a while when we needed it. And, uh, you know, I don't think we do that for each other again in America anymore. Yeah. Uh, and it was such a wonderful experience that I, that I kept in my heart. 
as I um, uh, kept, you know, moving and growing, you know, I followed my father. My father was uh, in, obviously, a farmer, and he had a um, inkling to get into restaurants. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, I did that with him. I followed him into restaurants, and uh, you know, I remember being a, a kid and you know, standing on a, I think, a, a milk crate washing uh, <laughs> vegetables in a, I think, at that point, a two compartment sink, and now we have yep. three compartment sinks. Yeah, exactly. You know, I found out that I had this ability and this love for cooking, you know, that I grew up with, with, you know, cooking, seeing so much fresh food every day from mom and dad. And, right. Uh, I grew, you know, I, I, I grew in that career. I went to Culinary Institute of America. I served an apprenticeship with a German chef and uh, took some classes at Ohio State a long time ago in business uh-huh. business development and things. But, uh, nice. you know, I, I, you know, found my, my path into the restaurant industry, being a chef and, and, uh, I had uh, a lot of restaurants of my own with my father in the family business, and uh, I'd been around the country a few times. I, an interesting part of this was uh, I did about a 10-year gig with the Olive Garden. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. When I started with the Olive Garden, they had five restaurants, and 10 years later, they had about 500. Wow. And it was quite quite the experience of uh, opening so many restaurants and uh, seeing uh, that company, which is uh, – you know, still pretty famous for their Italian food, you oh, know, yeah. salad and breadsticks. But I think they were um, probably 250 restaurants uh, open before anyone really knew who they were. So right. it was an interesting experience. And um, uh, somewhere along the line, I had always wanted uh, I well, since I was a kid, I wanted to live in New Orleans for some reason. Uh-huh. I was just drawn, drawn to the city. So uh, I found my uh, my way down there and spent uh, spent 10 years in New Orleans. And, oh, nice. Um, it worked at several places there, and with Al Copeland, who started uh, Popeye's Fried Chicken, mm-hmm. uh, helped him with some concepts there, and uh, went to work for a company. We had business partners in La Madeleine, French bakeries and cafes. Mm-hmm. We had tried to, we were going to do an IPO for that back in uh, 2001, and 9/11 happened. It was a, a rough year for uh, IPOs. Right. So we uh, ended up uh, selling the company to uh, a gentleman from France. What happened was we all kind of got a pink slip instead of uh, growing the company. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I didn't want to leave New Orleans. I wanted to stay there. So I went to work for an acquaintance of mine, Emeril Lagasse, down there. Oh, and, there you uh, go. Spent some time with him at uh, Delmonico and uh, cooking and running the restaurant. It was a really great experience. And uh, wow. somewhere along the line, again, I, you know, I've always done restaurant consulting and menus and food and things. Uh-huh. I had a, a, a partner that uh, I had done work for in his restaurants. He lived in, in Colorado Springs here, mm-hmm. where I am now. And he convinced me into moving to Colorado Springs and playing a restaurant with him. And, uh, and we came here. His name's Dave, great, great friend of mine uh-huh. uh, still to this day. And, and uh, so I moved here, and we had some restaurants in uh, the Springs and some other states. Somewhere along the line, I started volunteering for the Springs Rescue Mission here, a ministry in town that you know, took care of the homeless, the poor, uh-huh. things like right. that. And I started doing some cooking classes with um, some of the guys in the program. And working with the rescue mission kind of – definitely kind of changed my life. Uh, you, know, you know, it was so much about food and cooking and, you know, I've always enjoyed preparing uh, beautiful food for people and, you know, just, you know, the, the process of that and, right. you know, the lessons in, of, that cooking can bring because, you know, that's, uh, uh, can translate to, you know, all different matters of life oh, exactly. from, uh, from, a, from a recipe. Yeah. If you screw up the recipe, you might screw up some things. Or <laughs> if you get it right, it's really good. Or, you know, you add a different ingredient, it's, it's, it's the, the dichotomy of all that is incredible. Yeah. Well, you know, in that, we had a soup kitchen, and we certainly fed a lot of people. I, I was always, uh, I guess, a bit uh, concerned or not distressed or looking at uh, the, the least of us seem to have the least access to fresh, healthy food. Mm-hmm. I, there had to be a right. better way to do that. Again, this is probably where back in 2004, 2005, I, I read a book that, uh, you know, really started to change my life. It was called Begging for Change by a friend of mine now, a good friend of mine, Robert Igger, who started the D.C. Central Kitchen and just uh, opened the L.A. Central, L.A. Kitchen uh-huh. uh, just in this last year. Again, uh, the the whole book was around, uh, it was around, you know, nonprofits and people giving your time. And for him specifically, it was uh, about food and uh, wasted food and mm. uh, how we waste so much food in America. And, uh, you know, he started this incredible, incredible concept, the D.C. Central Kitchen. I think they serve 5,000 meals a day now and they train folks. Wow. And, um, and they, they use a lot of reclaimed uh, food and uh, yep. surplus food. And he's done a similar model in L.A. here, and, and it's, you know, pretty incredible. So I read that book, and I said, wow, there's got to be got to be something to this. got to be something else I can do in my life with this, you know. And then I uh, started reading about this lady named Denise who started the first community cafe. 
in Utah and Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. And it was a crazy concept. It was, you know, we're going to serve fresh food and we're not going to put any prices in the, on the menu and you just pay what you want. And uh, Wow, then, really? Yeah, folks thought they were crazy. I was reading, I read this section, I was on an airplane, I read this article, and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. So I'm looking at some things that are going on, and uh, I contacted her and said, I, I want to do one of these in Colorado Springs. And somewhere, maybe it took a year or so, we, she finally came out, flew out, and we talked, and right. I started to get this dream of, uh, of a community cafe, and what it might look like, and, and uh, how we might be, be able to deliver fresh, healthy food to everyone in the community. Uh, which is really the really concept behind a community cafe is there's no prices on the menu. It's great, healthy, locally sourced food. Wow. Uh, we do, you know, it's a nice cafe setting. It's not a uh-huh. soup kitchen, you know. Right. And uh, anyone can come in and order off the menu. And you pay what you think it's worth. And, uh, you know, we're talking good food here, uh-huh. <laughs> local, locally sourced organic stuff. So I would, I would guess, given your history, that it's great food. <laughs> it is. Well, you know. I would say so. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'll say so for you. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. We open, you know, and again, and you know, you talk about how life happens to you. you yeah, know, I, I knew, I knew we had to do this. And, and looking at successes and, and looking at failures in my life, you know, I'd probably have to say this community cafe or the community cafe uh, concept was probably one of my biggest failures for a while uh-huh. and then now certainly my, my biggest success I, I uh, had dreamt about this cafe of doing a cafe and uh, you know I went out and did all the all the sensible things about trying to do fundraising and mm-hmm. getting people to buy in on this and I was talking you know, I went to a couple other cafes that are around the country and uh, I think for a while you know between Denise and all the people that this organization called One World Everybody Eats which is kind of the overarching uh, non-profit for community cafes. Right. Uh, they probably thought it was nuts because I kept saying, I'm going to do a cafe, I'm going to open a cafe, but I could never get it done. I could never get the funding. I could never get the right location. Right. And it was, you know, I wrote business plan after business plan and tweaked it a little bit, and, and it was it was hard. It was very, yeah. very hard. Finally, in uh, 2013, there was a, a great change, a shift in America, I think, with uh, urban gardening. Mm-hmm. And, and I've definitely seen it here. Yeah. Fresh food and you know GMOs and and uh, everyone's talking about this stuff not only here in Colorado Springs but all over the country. So there there are shifts ha- has happened now, but uh, to you know locally sourced healthy food and mm-hmm. what that's about and growing your own food and so many backyard gardeners now and you know you know urban garden movements and in that I wrote a, a pretty much the same business plan went back to the same people I'd gone to before. And then they said, and, and the name Seeds came. It was, a, you know, the Seeds Community Cafe. It's something yeah. I had I had the community cafe uh, idea going, but I didn't really have it named. Oh. And I, I named it, and I did, I did you know, things that business people do. I bought a website and, right. and exactly. you know, some domains and yep. did a Facebook page. And, you know, I had the, I had the vision up there, and uh, people started to buy into it. And they said, wow, this really sounds like a good idea. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Really? And it's the same thing I talked to you about last year. Yeah, it's exactly. So what happened? I got the funding up and uh, in, uh, we became a nonprofit in early 2013. Wow. And then by September 2013, we opened the doors to Seeds Community Cafe, which is Colorado Springs' uh, only community cafe, one of uh, four in, in Colorado. Uh, but also uh, one of 60 across the country now. It's a it's a growing trend, and wow. uh, it's it's such a cool place. Uh, I mean, it's we really truly empower people with the power of food. Food is such a yeah. powerful thing, yeah. and uh, uh, you know, and teaching people how to cook, and you know, working with folks every day. And you know, I think since we've opened, maybe 75,000 meals we've served. Probably forty wow. percent of those the people in need, or about I don't know, what's that thirty five thousand or so? Yeah, the people exchange exchange an hour of service for a meal, and uh, in that we've you know we we teach cooking classes. We have wow. a wow. We, we, we do so much. I mean, it, you, you might come in the seeds, and you could see possibly the wealthiest person in Colorado Springs uh-huh. and the poorest person in Colorado Plus, Springs yeah. here, and they may be sitting at the same table or sitting at a table beside each other. No one knows who. Who is who? Because the great leveler is nobody knows how much you paid for your meal. Exactly. Uh, and the socioeconomic content of that, yeah. uh, when you think of your own life, it, that it has impact. But here it doesn't. And anyone could come in and share the same meal. And they, the conversations start. Life-changing mm-hmm. things start to happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. We, you know, some of the things we do, we have a culinary arts program. We work with the local community college here. And mm-hmm. we... Um, 
you know, we teach uh, folks uh, sometimes with addiction, uh, with uh, drug and alcohol addictions, and they're working through that. Or we've started to work with kids and folks with handicaps and disabilities, and we teach them culinary arts through our sustainable catering program, where Colorado Springs only organic, vegan, vegetarian cater. Oh, and wow. we have I'm on my way. Training. Yeah, I tell you, it's some good stuff. In the in that we've uh, we put 41 people back to work with living wage jobs wow. that were all jobs. I'm homeless. We got mm-hmm. them hooked up with some other agencies and and got them some a place to live and and they're still you know I think we're in contact with all those folks except for two of them mm-hmm. and uh, but they're all working. I mean you know they're they're they have truly owned their own lives again with the power of food. That's that's what wow. food can do. Wow. I don't even know where to start. I have so many questions. So a community cafe is you cook food and you invite people in and they pay whatever they want. Correct. How. How was that received when you first opened with the people walking through the door? Well, you know, to some extent, we did a lot of pre stuff, you know, again, a lot of social media. Mm-hmm. So people kind of understood what it was, mm. they, but they still didn't understand. You know, what, what gets them is when they walk in and there's no prices on the menu. <laughs> right there, like, whoa, what, 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 you know? Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, you, you know, this is great food. You know, they, and the cafe, it's a night, it's a cool little place, you know? And uh, the atmosphere is nice and you can feel the energy. Just say, hey, you know, pay what, you know, what we put up, we, we, we tell folks what the average donation was the week before because mm-hmm. they get confused. They say, we don't know what to pay. We say, well, you know, last week uh, our average donation was, you know, $12.10 or uh, $13.45, whatever it might be. We worked that out. And then I said, you know, pay what you feel is right. And, you know, you could pay it forward for someone else or, uh, you know, you could, if you can't afford to pay, Come on in, and we've got uh, 18 different positions for you. Oh my God! Uh, that helps help help in the cafe. Everything from, you know, helping us uh, get the cafe ready, rolling silverware, cleaning, sweeping, mopping. Uh-huh. You know, all the all the basic prep things. You know, things in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, there's, there's just so much to do, maybe helping with the catering. Um, you know, there's so many different aspects in a restaurant, a thousand different things that you can get people involved in. Yeah. And in exchange for that, they, uh, they get a healthy meal. We meet people where they are. Right. And we talk to them, the folks in need and that are experiencing food insecurity. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, we try to figure out what's going on in their lives. It's same, kind of some of the same stuff that happened at my kitchen table when I was a kid. Right, exactly. We just talk to folks and have a great meal wow. and uh, see what's going on in their lives. And, yeah. and. Uh, they come back again and again and again, and they help out. And uh, we have a very small staff, but we have an incredibly large volunteer army that helps us with this stuff every day. Nice. And uh, and we and we just keep rolling, and it's good. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know it's it's an amazing phenomenon. You know, I look at healthy food. And you look at you talk about farming. I always tell people that seeds is it's the pharmacy of the future. Uh, yes. Food is yes. is, is health. Yep. And yeah. uh, you know, more and more people are getting getting around on that boat too, including doctors, which are really really great. Right. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, you know, eating eating good healthy food, gosh, it nourishes you. I mean, mm-hmm. you feel you know, you don't feel lethargic after you have a meal. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, for kids especially, you know, empowering them with great food, with healthy food. What a what a better way to learn. You oh, know, when yeah. you go to school. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we really work on all those things. We, we teach so many people about about food. In El Paso County, we've got, gosh, oh, I don't know, 74,000 folks on food assistance. It's oh about 14% gosh. of the population. Yeah. Half of those are kids. A lot of those kids are experiencing childhood obesity. Mm-hmm. Uh, big, big increase in uh, allergies to food and, right, and children. Right, what we're putting and in. Those are what we're putting in. They're yeah. eating nutritionally yep. vacant foods. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Exactly. Trying to get them to eat a little fresh food is is key, and it uh, it it will it will change it will change the way you feel. It will yeah. change the way you react to the day. Yeah. So, when I walk in to your seed community cafe, is it seed or seeds? Seed. Plural. Plural. Seeds community cafe. I'll yeah. bet there aren't single tables in there, are there? There are not. Every <laughs> every table is a community table, isn't it? Well, pretty much so. We've got a big table, a big community table, but every table, yeah, people share tables all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know. Again, we've got a couple nice little corners where yep. you know you may have some business folks doing a little business meeting for lunch. Mm-hmm. You know, which what happens too. But you know, there's just a hum and an energy. There's conversation, and it's just it's over great food. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you see magic happening in there every day. Boy, do I see it every day. Um, I, I could, I can tell you stories. <laughs> Great. So that's that's actually what I wanted to ask you. Uh, give me a magical story that you've hap- that you've seen happen. By the way, 
Congra uh, congratulations on your third anniversary because this is oh thank you this is September of 2016 you started in September 2013 actually you know is this September 16th we are recording on September 16th I don't know if we can are we I don't know if we can say that I'll we'll cut it out absolutely we, we will not but <laughs> we our anniversary is September 16th that's when we opened oh my gosh we're, well, I, we're doing a, an anniversary thing in October but uh, it is actually today Oh my gosh! Wow. I, I feel so honored that you're spend, that you're spending this time with me. Then, <laughs> oh my goodness! Absolutely. So I want to know a story or two. Tell me the stories about the magic that you've seen happen. Oh gosh! Let me tell you about Tanzer. Tanzer is a young man, uh -huh. and he came to us with a local school district. Their disabilities. He he was in a program with them, and the students come in and and you know they'll roll silverware and help us in the morning and uh -huh. get you know things ready in the in the cafe. But he kind of always drifted to the kitchen. And he would just kind of stand. He was a real quiet guy, and uh, didn't didn't talk much at all. And uh, you know, but we were you know he would kind of separate himself from the other group whenever they came in. They came in about once a week, and mm -hmm. you know we would work with him in the kitchen and talk to him. And we could tell he liked uh, the kitchen, but just didn't talk too much to us. So you know what we would do when we knew he was coming, we'd put things on the menu like Tanzer's burger or uh, this is Tanzer's oh, nice. burger. Or, or you know, uh, Tanzer's Tanzer's shepherd's pie, or you know, and he just got it. You could just tell he got a kick out of that. Yeah. So we're probably three or four months into the group coming in, and he's in the kitchen, and this is late in the afternoon. He he breaks open. He starts to talk. We've never heard him talk, and he is looking at us, and he's looking around the kitchen, and he's talking about cooking, how he wants to cook, how he wants to bake he loves being in the kitchen and we're like T tanzer <laughs> uh dude cool you're you're talking and he's and he just goes on we were just i mean we were like in, we were in tears you yeah know? so he t you know he leaves with the group and and uh, goes home and later that evening i get a call from his parents and they say what happened to tanzer oh. I, said, I said i i don't know but he started to engage and he started to find a place I guess he felt safe in, you know, yeah. that he felt like a home. And, and, uh, you know, then he started coming in every week and then he started to talk and started to really function. I mean, his life, he changed totally. Yeah. And, uh, 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 you know, we, we had him doing all kinds of stuff. So he comes in one day and he has some banana bread, bread that he's baked. He goes, I made this banana bread. And I said, okay, let me taste some. And I tasted it and it was actually pretty good. Wow. And I said, Tanzer, this is pretty good banana bread. He goes, yeah, my mom helped me with it, but I, re I really like it. He goes, I just, you know, I just really like to bake. I said, well, you know what? You could bake some banana bread and bring it in for us. You know, we could put it in our pastry case here and talk to people about it. And, you know, we'd love to, you know, love to get the word out. He goes, really? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, you know, what, how would I do that? I said, well, you know, you could maybe make us, you know, 16 loaves of banana bread a week and bring it in. He goes, 16 loaves? <laughs> I said, yeah. And he goes, that's a lot of bananas. <laughs> I said, well, you, it doesn't, maybe you don't have to do 16, but but you could, uh, you know, maybe do less, but, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, bring it in. And we'd just love to share share your banana bread with everyone. Well, sure enough, the next week he comes in with, guess what, 16 loaves 16 of banana loaves. bread. Of course, that's what you told him to do. Yeah. He has since, this is, this is almost three years ago now when, when he first started coming to us, he since gra graduated that program with his, with his high school, mm -hmm. he bakes all the time. He still comes into seeds every week and, uh, he still, he volunteers, he spends time with us. He is part of the wow. family and his life significantly changed, um, with just the environment, with what we do with the power of food, yeah. truly the power of food. Well, and the and, power uh, and the power of community. Yeah, it's it's remarkable. Yeah, I mean, you 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 just built him up until he broke open. It it was totally amazing. Epic. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons I love doing these podcasts is because occasionally somebody will share an absolutely epic story that yeah. brings me to tears. You did it. Mm. I had to grab a tissue and and you know, because uh, oh. that was epic. Good job. Oh, thanks. We, I mean, we, you know, gosh, it, it's the, it's the cafe. It's, it's the cafe that does it. It's really seeds yeah. and, and all, you know, all the volunteers are, yeah. you know, our staff and we're just, you know, we're just loving people in the community mm -hmm. and uh, sharing some good, good vittles with them. <laughs> and having great conversation. Oh yeah. And having great conversation. So tell us about your garden. Well, we have a pretty cool garden. We actually call it the Sunrise Garden Project. And we've, you know, I've been on the board of uh, Pikes Peak Urban Gardens here uh, mm -hmm. locally for for many years, and uh, with uh, with Urban Gardens, we've we've they've helped us and we've grown food with them, and 
uh, in community gardens and in greenhouses. Uh, but the Sunrise Garden Project, there is an area town, the Hillside uh, community here in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. It's about 1,500 households and a lot of folks there in food insecurity. And there's maybe only 40% of the folks there drive and you know it's it's a it's a community that is you know it's it's a little depressed in town yeah uh and they got a great community center and we uh and they and they've got a they tried to get this garden going there and we got involved a couple of years ago and we entered in this little collaborative effort with uh, some other nonprofits in the city mm-hmm. and we uh, purposed to, and 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 the place in the hillside area it's a food desert mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. you know I, you probably know what a food desert is it's where you can't uh, you know there's no uh, access to affordable, healthy food. Fresh food. You know, the grocery store, fresh food. And yeah. so, you know, in this garden, and in this garden, in this project, what we wanted to do is to turn the hillside area from a food desert into a food hub. Mm-hmm. And we are still working on that. We're two years into this now, but we have this great garden there. And the folks in the community come and help us garden in that every, actually every day. Uh, we have a little farmer's market that we do on Saturdays. You know, we're engaging community, growing yeah. food, teaching families and kids wow. about, you know, what things, you know, what green beans don't come from cans. They're, you yeah. know, you, you know, there's seeds in the, in the soil and, and, uh, you know, so much, you know, tomatoes and squash and zucchini and, mm-hmm. you know, that some folks are just learning about f- food. You know, I think, you know, we've, we have divorced ourselves from the earth, I think, in America, yeah. you know, in our, in our in uh, society. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're getting back to that slowly, but, you know, teaching people, you know, it's, it's convenience foods, you know, folks are going in and the grocery stores and buying, buying the mac and cheese and, and, you know, they're, they're staying away from the fresh food, but you get them back into a garden, you put mm. them, you, you know, you plant, you know, gardening is an amazing thing. Uh, planting food is an amazing thing. I, I, I love it, I, you know, I, from my from my childhood, and I think sometimes we just need to put our hands back in the dirt, yeah, and uh, and just feel the earth again. But yep. you know, when you when you first plant something, you're you're a first time gardener, right? Or or, uh-huh. or you're gonna plant. And I, I always encourage kids when I do classes with them and and the families plant something. You know, my goodness, if if you can't do a you know a four by ten raised bed garden, which are good here in Colorado Springs in this uh-huh. in this growing area, you know, put a you know do a pot of plant and do a a herb. basil, tomato, yeah. any, herb, anything, because what happens is when you plant that seed and you watch it grow, and when you first do the first harvest, whether you cut something or whether you're taking a tomato or something off, you, you taste it. Generally, you're, you're going to taste it right there. Oh, yeah. You know, whether it's, or it whether it's in your garden or in yeah, your yeah. raised bed, you know. Yeah. And when you do that, I think something happens between your heart and your head mm. and you want to go share it mm-hmm. the next thing you know i talk anyway, i mean if you're gardening you know the, you know you grow something you grow a big tomato and you want to go show it off to yeah. your neighbors. and hey you know i've got zucchini i've got squash can i share it with you and i think it changes the communication yeah. that that happens with us and and uh, it, it, it's around food i think growing is so important and uh, you know when you see kids that uh, that are have never experienced a garden before and you work with them in the garden and they get their hands a little bit dirty and they're mm-hmm. watching stuff grow Mm -hmm. and then they start to taste the food and it is remarkable i'm telling you every time it's remarkable when you're you're cooking with some kids and they're uh and the first time they they're tasting something that's like this is incredible you know it's like it is incredible it's fresh food (laughs) and you know it's it's uh you know it's just something that we need more of we need uh we need uh some some more education around that and we need to be teaching people how to connect again with food and how important gardening is and just you know if it's a one pot you know i've I've talked you know i've got uh folks that come in in the food insecurity and in the and we teach them. We teach them classes, and mm-hmm. I've got uh, some moms that say, "Well, you know, I, I really don't have a place to grow anywhere." And I'm like, "Well, let's let's talk about where you live." And you know, it's a lot of times they may live in a small apartment. And they you know don't have much room. But I said, "You got a like a back patio or a back fence, you know, along your garden or your first floor." Mm-hmm. And a lot of them will say, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, you know, okay, we'll go to the dollar store. We'll buy a a laundry basket, line it." Put oh. some dirt in it, and you got a pot to grow food in. You can go to uh, the hardware store, mm-hmm. and get a get a, a gutter, poke some holes in it, oh, put yes. it up on the fence, and you got a, you got you can grow stuff right, right along the fence. You can start growing things right there. Yeah. And when they start to realize that, and and we look at how how easy it is to to, to grow some things. Uh, and they they'll start to do it, and they become yeah. engaged, and they you know it it it's such a great connective tissue to their other neighbors, to their family, yeah. uh, and to themselves. You know, as we as we grow food, you know, I I just I can't think of much much things better than growing food other than <laughs> eating it. 
Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. One of my, yeah. I, I just want to throw this in there. One of my favorite uh, hacks uh, for growing is you can actually just buy a bag of potting soil, a cubic foot or a cubic, uh-huh. and just cut a couple of X's in the top of it. Yeah. Put some holes in the bottom so it drains and grow food right in there. Yep. You know, it, it, is, it is not hard. Super, super simple. So I'm going to shift on you, and I would like okay. for you to talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure, and what you might have learned from it. Well, you know, I'll go back to, boy, I've had so many failures in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what's what's so relevant is, you know, the failures of trying to get a community cafe off the ground. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, that's it's still so prominent in my mind mm-hmm. where, uh, you know, of why I think I shared a little, a little while ago, you know, how difficult that has been. And, and yeah. uh, you know, to just to change and to communicate with with folks around with our neighbors, you know, where we are downtown and uh, uh, in the community about what we do, what we are, you know, why it's good. Once people come in and experience it and they get it, mm. it they, you know, they, they, they truly get it. But to, yeah. to really kind of sell that idea is. It, you know, I failed many times at that. I've had, you know, some ideas for community cafes and, and uh, um, it just it just didn't work. And we, you know, just couldn't couldn't get the idea off the ground and couldn't get yeah. the, the, as I said, we're funding going, things like that. Right. So it's it's you look at how, you know, how do we need to recommunicate that? How do we need to do something better? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, who, who do you need to involve? Who do you need to go to to get this to get these things going? And it really is uh, it's grassroots, truly grassroots yeah. where. Uh, you're looking at uh, you know our food system and trying to have a you know sustainable system right that is uh, you know it's it's hard to find in America yeah you know and uh, you know from 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 that uh, it it had it had some setbacks mm-hmm. so uh, uh, you know I guess you know I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the community cafe was was my biggest failure mm-hmm. <laughs> and the next question is your biggest success community cafe yeah yeah <laughs> uh, you know when it finally when we finally get all the pieces together and it when the door you get the doors open you know yeah. and again on the entrepreneurial side if i had waited till i had you know maybe enough money to open a community cafe yeah. I, I may still i may still not be open <laughs> but uh but you know we got it we got it going and yeah. you know we get we get so much support now and it's just it's incredible it's it's been uh you know the greatest uh the greatest success to my heart, to my soul. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think in, in seeing people's lives be changed that, uh, you know, when they, when they come in and, uh, you know, again, like, the, like, like Tanzer or, or any number mm-hmm. of folks that, that we deal with and talk to and, you know, share our lives with every day, uh, with food that, uh, you know, their, their, their lives change, their lives yeah. truly change and they, they get to own them again. Right. Here's what I'm going to say that speaks to. Okay that it was your biggest failure and your biggest success. And that is persistence. You did not give up. And that, I, you know, yeah. I, th- I think that is so incredibly important. Go ahead. That, well, I was just going to say, you know, it, it is, you know, if I, you know, I'll do, I have a, you know, I have my own Facebook page and, and mm-hmm. post things up there. And often, you know, I try to put positive things up there that'll encourage people. And, uh, every once in a while when I'm having, you know, one of those down days, <laughs> I, I, I put up, you know, Oh gosh, what's that saying? The um, uh, the mighty oak started out was as as, as a little a, nut, as a single you know? seed. Yeah, and, and and you just never ever 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 never ever ever give up. Yeah, you know, you, you just got you got to keep going, and you've got to keep you got to be persistent, and you've got to have the passion to want to do that. You know, if you've got yeah. the love for it, I think those things will work out. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, but there are there's times when it's like, oh, you know, I just wanted to throw in the towel, or oh, you yeah. know. You know, I wanted to go again. It's like you're growing a garden and the hailstorm comes. Yep. And everything's cut down. It's like, oh my goodness, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's one of those days. Right. But you know what? You you plant another seed and, you, and it grows and again, and, again. and you, yeah. you, you just don't give up. Yeah. So what drives you? The food, people. I love to cook beautiful food. I love to yeah. cook, and uh, you know, I love to share uh, cooking with folks, and mm-hmm. and uh, I, you know, it's it's. I, you know, I just, I have a passion for teaching folks about healthy food again, about yeah. fresh food, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just so, so important to our future and, and to, to what we do it's, you know, to be truly sustainable, to be a local a sustainable business. It's, it's just, it's a lot of, you know, some people say, well, you know, the words, you know, local sustainability, things like that, mm-hmm. but you know, man, there's so much, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. 
And there's a lot of communication, a lot of teamwork, a lot of community, yeah. a lot of love. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's people, you know, it's those relationships with people and, yeah. and uh, how we interact with each other and how food is such a incredible part of that. And, you know, it, it's just that platform. It's that platform that brings people together. That's yeah. that, and that, that drives me. The food and the community. Yeah. So I'm all about education and I have to know, is there one book that has been influential for you in this process? Well, you know, I mentioned Begging for Change a while oh, back yes, yes. In, in this thing. And, the, you know, another book that was very important to me was um, Local Dollars, Local Cents by Michael Schumann. Mm. Um, talking about, uh, you know, lo yeah, local, you know, local stuff, local economy. You know, where are we uh, going to continue to support Wall Street or do we support our our Main Street? Yeah. You know, in our, in our own homes. And, you know, not that Wall Street's bad, no. you know, but... Uh, uh, you know, we need to look a little more about uh, investing in our local community. And, and ma many times there's no local investment tools, you know, uh, in, in, in our communities. And, yeah. you know, how do, how do we create those? Uh, how do we create, you know, ownership? And, and, uh, and that's, it's, it's a true path to sustainability yeah. from that book. And, you know, in, in other books, you know, Michael Pollan, you know, gosh, anything by him. Oh, yeah. Uh, cooked or food rules or, you know, in defense of food. Uh, you know, I've got a name, you know, just the author himself. He, I mean, he's written some incredible books oh, yeah. that are that touch you if you're reading these things and mm -hmm. when you're looking at food. Perfect. So what one final piece of advice do you have for our listeners? Never give up. Uh, keep <laughs> yeah. keep cooking, you know, keep growing, you know, grow, you know, whether you're going to grow a garden or whether you're going to grow your soul, mm -hmm. never give up and just keep it going. Yeah. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show and sharing your experience with us today, Lynn. It has been a treat getting to chat with you. Thank you, Greg. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So how can our listeners find you, get a hold of you, find out about community cafes, about seed, well, you know, about seed community yeah. cafe? They could find us at www.seedscommunitycafe.org. Mm -hmm. um, they could look up Seeds Cafe or Seeds Community Cafe on Facebook. It'll pop up. Uh, we are located in downtown Colorado Springs. You could call us if you want to. It's 719-473-8206. Uh, but, you know, if you're out there uh, across the country, look at look us up on Facebook or look okay. us up on, uh, you know, on our website and, and see some of the things we're involved in for the future, too. We're really mm -hmm. engaging in some uh, larger yeah. garden projects and some food rescue things that we're doing and uh, really impacting our community with uh, the power of food. Perfect. Also, if you go to urbanfarm.org backslash seeds cafe, you'll get the show notes page and the podcast. So we'll put all this information there. Thank you. Great. Well, well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. Decades ago, I started growing food in my front and backyard, and I realized that my mission in life is to inspire and empower others to grow their own nutrient-dense, healthy, organic food. Because of this, a lot of people have come to me with their gardening questions over the years. And that got me thinking, what if we put together a community that would help budding gardeners blossom? So I finally made the idea a reality with my Urban Farm U member program. Each month, your membership includes three live online events, a monthly class, a chit chat with an expert, and a monthly coaching session plus access to the experts on our member page and a significant discount on our signature courses. I'm deeply committed to transforming our global food system, and I do this by empowering you to grow your own food. The Urban Farm Membership Program is a simple way to get going. Please join me in transforming your food system today. To learn more, go to urbanfarmmembership.org or text MEMBERSHIP to 33444. That's urbanfarmmembership.org or text membership to 33444. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.